Well, we're gonna take a break from talking about, you know, World War III and the impending burning down of all of Western civilization and talk about the complete destruction of entertainment with Critical Drinker. Thanks for joining me. Cheers, sir. So is creativity in Hollywood effectively dead? Because they're taking all the old IP and they're doing legacy projects that fundamentally betray the nature of the IP. They're doing this all the time now. Either that or they are making sort of fluff that has no, no actual creativity to it. They'll make a movie from the 80s, but they'll just remake it with a different skin. But there's no heart in it because it's not original. You, you know exactly what, you, you can see the moves before they're making the moves. Have you seen anything creative coming out of Hollywood recently? When you're talking about creativity, I think it still exists, it's just not incentivized in Hollywood anymore because it's safer to make some, either a remake of something that was older um, or a, another sequel, like say the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie, um, because there's brand recognition with those things. And so there's the idea that you'll have a built-in audience. And I think a lot of the problems stem from movies just being too expensive now. If you're dropping two, three hundred million dollars on a film, uh, you need a pretty solid guarantee that that's going to be financially successful. And the way they've done it is either we're going to do yet another superhero movie or we're going to do a franchise film or we're going to do a, a remake or a reboot of something that's got recognition. Um, there's far fewer now of these mid-budgeted movies around, say, the... the 30, 40, 50 million dollar mark, which they've got enough resources to do a good film, tell a good story, um, an original story, but they haven't got so much investment in them that it's got to be super safe. That's why I enjoyed a, a movie like The Creator that came out this year. Um, not a perfect film by any measure, but it only cost 80 million dollars. It looks like it cost two or three times as much. The, the visuals are fantastic and it's an original sci-fi story. You know, we just need more stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously Nolan is the king of this because he was doing this on, I mean, if you watch Following, which is on a zero budget, he's making terrific film yeah. on a zero budget, and then he has the ability to scale up. You, you do see a lot of these directors, Ryan Johnson's a perfect example. You give him a big budget, and he actually goes more off the rails mm -hmm. with the big budget because it allows him to indulge all of his, all of his whims. Taika Waititi is another example of, of that kind of director where um, he... <laughs> When he's doing things like Thor, Love and Thunder, he just looks like a child in a, a, a candy store who's been given unlimited money and just set loose. You know, and it's like there's nothing to rein him in. So he's just like coming up with ideas on the fly and they're costing millions of dollars to film. They might get into the movie, they might not. But either way, the end product is garbage because it's not focused. It's not... Um, that they're not working with limited resources where you have to be very disciplined about what you spend your money on. And that's, that's the difference. From maintaining control of your assets to easing the burden on your loved ones, an estate plan can ensure your family stays prepared and protected. If you're looking for a way to set up your estate, to offer financial benefits and more, you need to check out Trust and Will. Traditional estate planning, it can cost thousands of bucks. Many one-size-fits-all solutions might not capture all the important details of the life you've built. With Trust and Will, you can protect your legacy from the comfort of your home, starting at just $159. They've simplified the process of creating and managing your will or trust online from finding out what's right for your family to finalizing documents with a notary. My wife and I, we've rewritten our wills several times primarily to make sure that our kids are taken care of should God forbid something happen to us. You need to do the same thing and you can do it easily and quickly with trust and will. Secure your assets, protect your loved ones with trust and will, get 10% off, plus free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash Shapiro. That's 10% off free shipping at trustandwill.com slash Shapiro. Go check them out right now. It's a super important thing to do. Make sure that you have your trust and your will all set up. Go check them out right now. 10% off free shipping at trustandwill.com slash Shapiro to get started. It feels like we might be forced back into a model that's more workable just by the market. I mean, the, the fact that the theaters are effectively failing, the fact that you can't open a movie anymore, that there's certainly no stars except for Tom Cruise, apparently, yeah. who, can, who can open a movie. The star system is completely destroyed. And the fact that the streamers are beginning to, to start to lose subscribers, the budget on these movies is inherently going to drop. And you would imagine that as that budget drops, there are gonna to have to be people who are able to use a 30, 40 million dollar budget mm -hmm. and make something that's actually pretty good. I mean, look at the, the John Wick series, for example, it's become extremely popular. Um, that started out with John Wick 1 and it was 15, maybe 20 million at most that that cost to make. And it's the best of the series still. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And it's like, you've got a neat little thriller with great action sequences and stuff. It doesn't have to cost the earth. And um, that I think is where we're probably heading because the assumption was we would go in that direction after COVID. Yeah, the lockdowns closed down a lot of theaters and it really um, shrunk audiences because there's a certain number of people, I suppose, who just wouldn't go back to movie theaters after that. They just didn't want to be in that crowded place. And so audiences 
attendance would be lower, the budgets had to come down. It didn't quite happen that way. They still kept making these crazy two, three hundred million dollar movies. I think one of the things that COVID also did, which was interesting, is that it made clear the stuff that you actually want to see on a big screen and the stuff that you actually don't care about. And I think those aren't quite the same as Hollywood thought they were. So Hollywood thought, okay, big action sequences with superheroes blowing things up. And no one's going to want to watch that on their phone or on their TV. They're going to want to go to a theater to see that. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, it kind of looks the same in a theater as it looks on your phone. But what doesn't is Oppenheimer. Right? Yeah. Well, what, what actually doesn't look the same in a theater as it does on your phone is Dune. Right? The stuff that's actually kind of truly artistic and creative, that's stuff you actually do need to see in a theater. Like, I regret that I saw Dune first time on my phone. Like, that, that was a mistake. I should have gone and seen that in a theater and, and it felt the theater rumble when the ships are landing. And, and I felt the same way with Oppenheimer. I, I first saw it in a non-IMAX theater, then I saw it in an IMAX theater again. And the first time I saw it, I was like, this is a big movie. And then in the IMAX theater, it's, a, it's an even bigger movie. And that's a biopic, which is insane. I mean, again, Nolan is, it, God, Nolan, he's, he's amazing at, at what he does, except for Tenet. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was too much Christopher Nolan in one movie, I think. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, was, that was the end of him playing with time, you would hope. Like, that was, that was like, I've, they're, they're, he's now explored this idea down to the marrow where there's nothing left to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what Nolan does next. I'm, I'm always fascinated. He, he's the, the only person who announces a movie and I buy my ticket like two years in advance. I think so, yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those um, directors where you genuinely get excited to see what he's going to come up with next. And Oppenheimer was a great, uh, a great example of it. You know, um, it seemed like the kind of film that wasn't going to appeal to a mass audience because ultimately it's, um, it's a historical biopic. It's not action packed. Um, it's, it's very much grounded in reality and it's um, told in the form of flashbacks and so on. So it's quite a complex movie and it's long. All of those things should count against it, and yet it was massively successful. It's great to see. It's great to know that there is still a huge audience for films like that, and hopefully we see more of it. Well, I really appreciate this conversation. This has been, again, a great break from the world, and now I'll have to get back to, I think, talking about World War III. So I appreciate it. Good to see you. Thanks, Ben.